Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com. Today I'm going to review a case study with you that comes from WebsiteBox.com where they did a back-to-back -back existence test to learn the value of elements and pages. You might consider this the one-two knockout combo. This test had a huge impact for the customer to the tune of about half a million dollars. The goal of our testing was to learn what was most important to the visitors so that we could get those important elements and pages in front of them sooner and so we could know where to begin our optimization efforts. Knowing that our time was money, we didn't want to optimize things that weren't as valuable and by doing these existence tests, we were able to learn exactly what mattered to the visitors. Even with a losing test, we could still, still see where the value was. So this first test was taking their five main pages of the website, their home page, their design page, their client samples page, their tour page, and their pricing page, and putting these five pages against themselves to see which one was better. To do this, we took those five pages and, and for the test, each page would function as the home page. So 20% of the visitors would get the tour page, 20% of visitors would get the designs page, and 20% of visitors would get the pricing page. And so these pages became the first page of their visit in place of the home page. We were existence testing the first page of the visit using the existing pages of the site. This was important because it created a lot of efficiencies. We didn't have to create new pages. We didn't have to go out and design anything new. We just said, hey, we already have a page that talks about pricing. We already have a page that talks about client examples. Why don't we just see if those pages at first give the visitors a good experience? So that was the test design. The goal was to learn what pages mattered, to learn what content mattered for the visitors, and to be able to see the relative impact of those pages to each other. So for example, if the design page did way better than the pricing page, that would teach us that the design elements were more important than pricing right out of the gate. Knowing this, it allowed us to prioritize efforts. Let me show you the results for this test. The data shows us the relative value of the pages that did good and did bad. And the worst performing one was the plans and pricing page. That may make sense. You know, people come to the site and they see the plans and pricing, they're like, well, what am I buying? Why, why would I want to choose a plan if I don't know what I'm, what I'm after? However, this was important. Even though it was the worst experience with a negative 28% lift, knowing that, that the plans need to come after may seem like common sense, but we've seen other websites and other um, business models where knowing the price first is the most important thing for the visitor. The next worst page was the tour page with a negative 16% lift. And on the surface, we were kind of surprised by this. The tour page is kind of the, the features page. It showed everything that, that you get with the tool. And we expected this tour page to do better. So this helped us learn that that page really needed to be improved, knowing that there's, it's an important part of the visitor journey for the customer, but they, they weren't getting the benefit out of it that we thought they were. The next worst page was the client samples page. And this page had a negative lift of 10%, which again helped us know the relative value of these elements. Finally, the design page had a negative 3% lift, which is about in line with natural variance. And so the control and the design page we learned were the most important pages initially for that first visitor experience. So this teaches us that the designs are really important to visitors. It was on par with the control. The control had a hero and a few different elements below it. And so we learned that the combination of elements in the, in the main control page was important. The design is also very important, so we know that we should have design examples up front so the visitors can see them. And we also learned that the tour page needed to be fixed. We learned that the pricing page and needed to come later. And so there was a lot of takeaways from this test, from doing existence tests on the first page of the visit and substituting these pages for the home page. So Website Box did this one-two punch. The reason it's the one-two punch is because they didn't stop there. We did an existence test on the home page. We had some home page elements and we wanted to learn. We already learned the design was important and we already learned the relative value of how we should order things. And so we did the same thing on the homepage. The homepage has this hero banner section where it has the price, has kind of a visual of what, what they get. And, and then the next section has a bunch of samples, client samples, like, hey, here's what it looks like in practice. And then the third section at the very bottom had a bunch of testimonials. People had written positive reviews and articles about how the, this company had been featured to solve the problem of realtors. So again, doing a distance test, typically you would hide the element in question and see how it performs when it's not there. We took a reverse approach this time. It's kind of like the reverse existence test where you hide everything else but that element and you see how that element on its own fares. By doing that, you get to see, again, the relative value. Like, hey, if we just put this element on the page, how does it do, how does it stand its own if it's by itself? This is, again, a reverse existence test because you're not 
hiding the element itself to see the value of that element. You're hiding those elements around it to see, again, how that element can, can support the visitor in their journey. The results of this test were really interesting. We expected something completely opposite. When we hit that first section that had the hero banner and kind of the, the large price and the, the beautiful visuals of what the, the visitor gets with this website, that we expected that to do really well by itself because it was the main value proposition. But when we had just that by itself, there was a negative 21% lift. What this teaches us is that that alone, like the, the, the design and the visual by itself isn't enough. Without having the samples and the testimonials and that combination effect, that that wasn't very good for the visitor. When we had just the second spot by itself, there was a negative 9% lift. And when we had the third spot by itself, we had, there was a negative 8% lift. Now you might be thinking, well, you got lots of negative lifts with these, but again, the, the value of doing a distance test and removing elements is to see the relative value of those elements. So we learned that that main hero feature by itself couldn't stand on its own. And by doing that had a negative 21% lift. That it's so important for this company in their niche to have testimonials, to have samples and designs. And so you're starting to see the pattern of things we're learning. Design is so important and testimonials paired with design becomes really valuable. And so by doing these two tests, we were able to see the relative value of this type of content and the relative value of homepage elements, which then allows us to redesign the homepage and to give the visitor a flow that puts them in front of these elements according to the value that we found. The goal of this testing wasn't to get a big lift. The goal was to learn what matters to the visitor so that with follow-up tests, we can then give them the experiences that are ideal for them to help them get that lift. So a few takeaways from this, remember to prioritize learning over lift. You wanna make sure that you're learning about what helps your visitors, and that's more important than just getting the temporary short-term gain. A few tests like this where you set yourself up for long-term success because you've learned the flow that matters, you've learned the elements that matter, and you've learned what is important to your visitors by doing these types of tests, even with a small, uh, negative lift in the, in the, in the short term, you can get massive gains because you now know how to prioritize your testing efforts. You now, now know what matters to your visitors and you can take that learning and create amazing experiences. Thanks for joining me today. If you've watched this far, you probably liked it. So go and give me that thumbs up and then please subscribe to my videos as well so you can get the latest updates with trainings just like this, more case studies, more examples, and more theory to help you better in your testing efforts and give you more conversions and better tests.